Hey geeks, welcome back. Welcome back. Very, very cold day in the south. Uh, coldest day of the year so far, but it's only the 16th. So, um, <clears throat> this is going to be part three of our comics bender. I'm still working my way through all the comics um, that I bought around the holiday season. Um, if you define the holiday season from, say, like Halloween to Super Bowl. <laughs> And Super Bowl isn't here yet, but we all know who's going to it. So, um, yeah, but no, in actuality, let's just say like between Thanksgiving and New Year's. Yeah, so um, so this is kind of informal. There's been two other comics bender videos. This will be the third uh, and a bunch of other stuff. So I've got a um, I've got a video in the can that I already did. Uh, that was about the Phantom Stranger Omnibus and the Question Omnibus. And I'm going to um, release that after I uh, <clears throat> release this one. I wanted to do these videos where we got through all of these uh, individual, um, pretty much $1, no holler comics. Um, so I have a, a short box of comics that I bought from Urban Legend Comics in Brandon, Florida. Uh, it's my favorite comic book shop. The guy sells nothing but used comics, um, <clears throat> knows new stuff. For the longest time, he didn't even sell trade paperbacks, but he kind of kind of started that about a year ago. Of course, they're, they have to be used, so there's, there's nothing brand new. He doesn't sell any brand new, you know, so you're not going to get any new issues coming out on Wednesday or, um, you know, new, new omnibuses and TPBs and that kind of thing. You just you're not going to find it there, and um, so it's it's all used comics. And uh, but man, he's got some. He's got some good stuff. Um, the guy is a workhorse. Uh, he's constantly refreshing his inventory. He's constantly on the hunt for new comics to, to bring into the shop. So um, mad props to, uh, to Greg, I believe his name is. I apologize, Greg, if I got your name wrong. Um, and I have your business card. Like, In fact, I do have it right here. Um, his name's not on it, but I'm pretty sure his name is Greg. But if you're ever in uh, in Brandon, you can't see that very well, but you can find him on Instagram, um, Insta, uh, Urban Legend Comics of Brandon, B-R-A-N-D-O-N. And uh, yeah, if you're ever in Brandon, Florida, which is a uh, bedroom community of Tampa, definitely drop by his shop. I, I think you'll be very impressed. Uh, that's not too downplay the comic shop that's near me um, who I love. I was just in there um, briefly yesterday. I was looking to pick up uh, Frank Miller's Ronin Book 2, Issue 6. Um, and I'm not even sure if there is an Issue 6. There's definitely an Issue 5. <laughs> but I assume, that I'm pretty sure there is an Issue 6. I don't think it's come out yet, so it, it wasn't there. And um, But um, got into a real good conversation with the lady behind the counter um, cause that's one of those places like I walk in and like, they all pretty much know me, which is, you know, which is really cool. You know, it, it's nice to walk into a retail establishment and like have the staff, like pretty much everybody on the staff recognize you and, and, and know you and, and, you know, get into conversations with you. Like it's the kind of place like while they're ringing up people in between ringing up to people, they'll carry on conversations with you about whatever and so I got into a long conversation this time around about Rebel Moon so um, which is still a hot topic of conversation amongst the geek community that I run run in and um, if you don't know what I mean by that go check out my Rebel Moon rant video like share and subscribe it if you want I think there's an important message and probably a little bit of a different message than what you're gonna find on other channels on YouTube um, I just said, as you can see, my, my dry cleaning in the background. <laughs> yes, I do have another life beyond making comics videos. Uh, I have a uh, professional life um, so uh, that I take very seriously, hence the dry cleaning. So um, I, have to, uh, I have to go to work tomorrow. Um, I have to drive north, and it's bitterly, bitterly cold. I'm hoping the roads aren't too bad. 
hopefully they cleared the snow off most of the roads. But um, yeah, gotta gotta go do some things that um, that secure you know that that make all of this other fun stuff possible. Um, so on that note, let's uh, let's dive into some of the comics here. Oh. One other thing before I get into that, I almost forgot, and this is important. So um, there's a there's a new channel I found. It's not a new channel. It's been around 11 years, but um, Sleepy Reader 666 is an awesome comic book channel. The guy's name is Damien, and he turned me on to a hashtag today um, from another channel called A Comic Bookworm, who I subscribe to, um, and the hashtag is hashtag CBC Noob. So uh, Hashtag C B C N E W B C B C noob, and um, so I think that the the gist of that is um, trying to get some exposure to channels like mine and, and theirs, um, people that are just kind of making you know content about comics that we buy and collect and and you know look at and comment on and so forth, and. Um, yeah, hopefully it'll add some new subscribers for me. Um, us folks in this community, I don't know if I'm a part of their community or not, but I'm, I'm looking in on theirs. Um, you know, we don't get a lot of subscribers. <laughs> this is not a this is not a big dollar you know operation here. Um, you, there's just a bunch of people who like to make videos about comics, and my channel is like you know pretty much a ninety percent comics. I mean, I, I'm you know. You, if you roll through my list, like I've got some videos on some books that I've, I've bought, um, and I do have on my agenda to, to make some videos about some interesting books that I've read, and, and they're generally books that would probably be interest of interest to some segments of the comic audience as well, because I really see all of that kind of meshes together in my brain. Um, and then a little bit about movies, too. I, I've only made one video dedicated to a movie and that's that rebel moon rant but i occasionally will bring up you know um movies i did oh, i did make a move i did make a video about the flash movie and um i kind of made a movie a video about the 2001 a space odyssey movie but that was in the context of the of the jack kirby marvel adaptation so um and if you haven't seen those videos especially that 2001 video it's a three-parter um, but it's only about an hour and 40 minutes in total. Go check that out because I'm, I'm kind of proud of that video, especially the second, well, the first and second segments. Um, the third episode of it is really only like five minutes, ten minutes, I think. I was just wrapping it up for the most part. So, um, yeah, check those out if, if you have a chance. And, and, and share that 2001 video with your friends. Uh, I think my commentary was a little bit different than, again, what you'll find in a lot of other places. Anyway, the hashtag comic, um, I'm sorry, the hashtag CBC noob, um, it comes with a list of questions that are posted on a comic book orange channel. So I'm going to try to run through these real quick. Um, Zero, okay, question zero, call to action, shout out to three or more channels. Well, I, I mentioned Sleepy Reader 666 and um, a comic book worm. Um, what's another channel? My own channel. <laughs> um, another. Oh, re really for me where it all started was during the pandemic. Uh, and I mean, these guys are the godfathers now on YouTube. These are the kings. Yeah, it's the cartoonist kayfabe channel. Um you know, Ed and Jim are professional artists and comic makers. And um, those two got me back into comics, really. Um, I was out for decades. And um, during the pandemic, when I was just, you know, I actually, I know exactly how I came across their channel. During the pandemic, for whatever reason, I was thinking about that, that 2001 A Space Odyssey comic by Jack Kirby. Because I never had it, I only I only got a copy of it finally about a year ago, and um, but it always just kind of stuck in my head because I'd seen it, you know. And when you look at certain things by Kirby, like they imprint into your brain and like they're there, like they're tattooed into your memory forever. <laughs> so, so I did a search on YouTube to see if anyone had done a video about it, and 
sure enough, theirs came up. And, uh, and I, you know, I was like, oh, wow. I mean, here's two guys that are just like enthusiastic about comics and they're, they're talking about comics. Oh, and they make comics too, professionally. And, uh, so I started looking at some of their other videos and by then they, they probably had around 400 videos, 350 videos. They're up to, they're up to about, I think, 1500 videos now. They, they make a new video daily. So, um, so yeah, watching those during the lockdowns and just like, you know, binging, <laughs> binging those got me, you know, just lit the fire. And I was like, man, you know, I mean, I'd been buying, you know, graphic novels here and there. Um, but definitely was not buying any single issues anymore. You know, wasn't buying really any omnibuses or anything like that. Just occasionally a graphic novel here and there. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I'd been out of the game since like the late 80s. I had no clue of what happened in the 90s. And, you know, and I, I, as I said before in this channel, I'm not a huge 90s comics fan, but I don't know. I've been reading some more current Marvel and DC stuff lately, and it's kind of making me have a new appreciation for the 90s. Um, and I've, uh, I've, got a, I've got a couple of comics, actually, and I, I mostly want to keep this channel positive, but I just... I have to call out things that I see that are just, as a comics reader, that, that are just unacceptable to me. And so I do have a video in the works. It's not going to be a long one. It's only two issues of, of, um, of Deathlock uh, that came out uh, around 2015, I think. The most, I guess, I think the most recent Deathlock run in Marvel. And one of the things I've been doing in the, in the past couple of months, actually, is, is like collecting the Deathlock, all the Deathlock titles all the Deathlock series because uh, I loved Deathlock you know back in the 70s and the 80s when I was a kid um, so you know I found a couple issues of that from the most recent run uh, where you know where he had his own title I mean, there's just no comparison in those comic books compared to even even the ones that came out in the 2000s you know uh, which were actually quite good and the ones in the 90s were actually quite good so uh, yeah, it's, but I noticed that with a lot of their comics, you know, um, they're just bland. The The art is bland. The, the, the stories are bland. Ugh, I just, and that's like the antithesis of what comics should be. You should not ever make a bland comic unless it, unless it fits the context of the story. But even then, you know, like, like, you know, what do you think would a, a bland environment, what would that be like in a story, like in the context of a story? Like it would be like Orwell's 1984 It would be drab. It would be bland. And but, um, you know, but that would fit the context. Right. But there's ways you can still do that and make that visually interesting. And I, I, I know there's some 80, 1984, probably graphic novels out there. That I haven't looked at, but, you know, but to make my point, though, anyway, I just go off on tangents. You know, that's what these channels should be about. Um, so anyways, the questions. Uh, so, yeah, three channels. So I did that. Uh, why did you start a comic book channel? Because of my geeky obsessions. Um, this started out, I was kind of making private videos for just a couple of friends of mine. Um, where I was just, you know, holding the phone over some comics and just talking, you know, 15 minute videos. And then my, my cat, God rest her soul, would walk into the shot, you know, and that's always fun. That's always cute. And um, yeah, that's, that's kind of how it started. And, and then, you know, as my enthusiasm kind of ramped up more and more for the stuff that I was um, going after and collecting and, and looking at, um, and my love of comics was kind of reinvigorated. I thought, you know, I'm, I'll make a, I'll make a channel, you know, I'll just go ahead and make a channel. And, uh, so that's, that's, that's what, that's what this is now. Uh, what are some fun and unique things you can bring to the comic book community? Um, so I think one of the things that I've done differently is, well, one, I think my personality is fun and different. <laughs> and, uh, two, um, I, if you watch my videos, 
I, I think I bring a different perspective. I mean, there's so many comic channels out there. There's probably some people who think along the same lines of me, but I do think I'm pretty unique um, in, the, in how I comment on comics. I tend to bring kind of a, um, a mythological um, approach to the comic book material to the, you know, to the various genres. Um, and, you know, that's not a new idea by no means. Um, but I'm very interested in that aspect of comics. And, and I think it's why comics appeal to so many people on a, on, on a subconscious level, especially if you go back in the, into the 50s, 60s, 70s, and, and 80s. Nobody really started talking about that aspect of comics, I think, until maybe the, the 90s, you know, where people began to realize there was kind of a gnosis or there were Gnostic themes in comics. Uh, and there are some great books on that subject, of which I've, I've read a couple of them. There's more that I, that I want to get around to reading. So, um, yeah, that... That commentary um, is what I bring to the table, I think, uh, that might be a little different than, than a lot of other channels. Um, but I also, I like to point out the absurdity of comics, and I mean that in a good way. Like, one of the appeals of comics is that there's so, some of them are just so absurd, <laughs> You, you know, like, and you know that, you know, but that I, I, I see it as like a contest of like how much crazier can you make it? Cause you can do anything in a comic book, anything. And, um, so it's this, this just, the whole thing is this fertile, uber fertile ground for ideas and storytelling. And so that alone makes that fertile ground, I think, subject to, like the collective mythological unconsciousness. Woo, woo, woo. Okay, so, you know, that's where, that's that's my uniqueness. Um, what are you most excited about for this new channel? I'm excited to be here, and uh, I'm glad that I have an opportunity to do a channel like this right now because you never know when that opportunity could be taken away from you. Uh, number four, what one is the first ever comic book you per you got purchased and read? So, um, yeah, my very first video is kind of on that subject. It was Avengers. Um, let me look it up here real quick. I think it was Avengers because I always forget that number, but I'll never forget the cover. And that's how I knew it. No, I was going to say Avengers 138, but it's not that. But I do know how to find it. Let's see. Momentarily here. Oh, come on. It's giving me, like, music. What? It's ridiculous. Oh, what issue is it? Oh, we're getting close. We're getting close. I'm going through the... The image, um, Google Images, where's that cover at? They're giving me like every cover but the one that I have in mind. <laughs> and then a lot of a lot of posters for a movie. So um, this is crazy. Where is it? Here's kind of a snippet of it. But that website's in all Spanish. I don't know how to read Spanish. Um, all right, so it's going to be like that then. Let's try this. Wow. I'm disappointed in the internet. It just, because this is exactly how I found the comic before when I was thinking about it. I did an internet search and it came up and now it's like nowhere to be found. So, um, uh, let's try this. 
now this is just this is driving me crazy so bear with me i've got to go i've got to see this through to the end <laughs> i will find it i will i'll just go back through my video reels i have um 33 videos soon to be 34 videos now Okay, you may hear some background audio here. This is my... And that um, they inspire folks to... Um... Let's see, where is it? I did... Um... Channel to... I did... Uh, this drives me crazy. Yeah, I don't know what that issue is, and it's a famous cover. I just, I don't see it in this video. I am going to try a different search engine. Maybe I need to get more specific with my search terms. Although I said Avengers comic book cover. Yeah, there it is. So um, it was just, it was the, the horrible search engine I was using. I'm not going to name names. Um, Avengers number 149 from 1976. And um, on the cover is a uh, basically Thor walloping Orca. Um, and then the other Avengers are fighting a bunch of dudes, a bunch of uh, villains below it. And yeah, I think they're fighting either Hydra or AIM in that issue. But, but Orca was just so huge on that cover. You know, he just towers over everybody. Um, and I don't know... Trying to zoom in and see if there's a signature on that cover, because uh, I don't, I don't. Th it looks like it was me. I don't know. It, it. Oh, you know, I know who did this cover. I think it was Herb Trimpey. It was either Herb Trimpey or maybe Gene Colan. Anyway, that cover is still one of the best ever. It's just, uh, it's just so good. It, I mean, you got this guy, Orca. And his mask is like, you know, it's just, he's got a big old round head, but he's got those orca teeth that go all around. <laughs> it it kind of keeps his face in the mask, or it keeps the mask on. It's just, you know, it's it's crazy, it's ridiculous, you know. And like Thor's just like, you know, and he says, "Your mightiest blows have no effect on me, Thunder God, but can you survive the death punch of Orca?" The killer whale. Oh, that's why it wasn't finding it. I was misspelling it. It's O R K A. I was spelling it O R C A. So I kept getting the Orca movie poster from the seventies, um, which is a good movie. If you've never seen that movie, uh, it's worth checking out. Um, that who was in that? Richard Harris and um, oh god, now I gotta look it up. <laughs> Uh, what is that actress's name? Um, what is her name? Charlotte Rampling. Oh, I was thinking it was somebody else. I was thinking it was um, somebody else, a different female lead, but... Um, yeah, it was a Dino De Laurentiis film with Richard Harris and Charlotte Rampling, uh, based, on, based on the novel by Arthur, Arthur Herzog. It's a, it's a good movie, and um, uh, gosh, I, 1977 is when it came out. I don't think I saw it. It was rated R. I don't think I saw it in the theater. 
I think I saw it on cable. Um, as a young boy, Charlotte Rampling in that movie, I found her to be <laughs> quite entrancing. <laughs> okay. Thank you for your patience now that we've gone. I don't even know where I'm at in these questions. Uh, number five, what kind of comic books do you like to collect or read? Oh, man, a lot. <laughs> Um, I love anything space opera uh, or cosmic so you know anything Kirby obviously Ditko you know Strange Worlds Atomic Age um, Starlin you know cosmic mythological you know cosmogenesis space gods you know um super cosmic weapons galactus silver surfers dark side you know um the the eternals anything that's got that heavy science fiction element to it um and then but i like noir you know i kind of like that has been a more recent phenomenon for me, but it, it's still born of Frank Miller's Daredevil era. So I'm on this kick now. I get on these kicks. So I'm on this kick now where I'm like going for like mystery men in hats and trench coats, you know. So the Phantom Stranger, the question, uh, I've started grabbing up the shadow where I can find him. Um, maybe the Phantom. I, mean, I was intrigued by the Phantom as a kid, but he's not really in a hat or a cape, so... <laughs> You know, um, I, I never was a big, never was big into horror comics, but I am kind of warming up to things that are like on the mist house of mystery side, you know, so things of, of, of a more kind of ghostly supernatural. I don't like, like slasher gore type comics. Um, so yeah. Uh, and then just there's just general superhero stuff that's good, that's well written, you know. Um, so coming to mind, like stuff like you know what Marv Wolfman and George Perez were doing on New Teen Titans in the '80s. Um, and then you know I I love Justice League, I love the Avengers, uh, and the characters you know that that are woven into that. Love you know probably in terms of top superheroes, Batman and Iron Man, my two favorites. Um, but I mean the phases go on for years I, I've really you could say I've been on a Batman kick for the last five years prior to that I was an Iron Man kick um, for about eight or nine years you know I wasn't buying a lot then but I was still grabbing you know the occasional TPB and that's of course that coincided with when the movies you know started appearing so um I like, um, yeah, I like mostly um, Bronze Age and Silver Age, I would have to say. Although I love the Golden Age, too, but it's a little more unobtainable. You know, I've been getting Golden Age where I can get it in terms of paperback or omnibuses, you know, because Golden Age is expensive, you know, individual books because they're so old. Um, but, you know, individuals and, and collected editions, Bronze and, and Silver all day long. Um, and then the other age, I, I, you know, I heard Sleepy talk about the Copper Age. I, I guess that came after the Bronze Age. So, yeah, a little bit of that era, you know. I, I, to me, I guess Copper is probably, I'm going to guess, maybe say, let's say from the Dark Knight on to like the 2000s, perhaps, so the 90s, you know. And, um, you know, like I said, not was not a big fan. We go back, I look at the 90s. I'm not a huge fan at, of the 90s comics, though. Maybe some of the indies, like so... You know, in the 90s, though, there's great stuff. There's, like, Mr. X. I love Mr. X, you know. Although I think he goes back into the 80s, you know. And Grendel from Matt Wagner when I discovered that. You know, so indie, indie 90s for sure. Um, really, indie comics from the 90s on up, there's stuff going in and out that's great, you know. And I, I'm still looking for, you know, I'm still buying here and there some, some indie stuff. And you'll see. And... Um, you know, kind of. I kind of count image in that some of the image stuff. Um, so yeah, you know. Um, but 
yeah, my tastes change. You know, if I if something gets on my radar, you know, I just go on some kicks. You know, it's been, you know, recently it was like Shogun Warriors. I think I've got all of those now. Um, I'm on this current kick though, where yeah, I'm I'm, I'm collecting all the Deathlocks. Um, I've started to get into collecting all the Lobo that I can find, um, and uh, I really want to start looking into the to the Iron Man comics of the very late 80s there, like 88, 89, uh, but then the 90s. I, you know, I want to get all of the Matt Fraction comics of Iron Man. That's my thing. I'm kind of eyeing that area now. Um, and, and probably the Bendis stuff too, you know? So, um, cause, cause I'll stick with Iron Man. Yeah. I'll stick with Iron Man. Um, yeah, so that's, you know, we'll see it's an ever changing landscape, which is what makes this, you know, a cool, a cool hobby. Um, have you ever speculated on a comic book? If not, why not? If so, what was your speculation book and why? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, um, when, when Frank Miller was doing Daredevil and I was like 13 years old, I was buying those in triplicate. Um, and then when he announced that he was going to do, uh, Ronin for DC, I was buying those in quadruples <laughs> and I still have all those. And, um, only of those four, you know, that I was buying, I'd read one, put it back in the bag. The other three never opened, never touched to this day, never opened, never touched. So they are, I'm sure in mint condition. They're probably 9.6s. Um, Dark Knight Returns, you know, I didn't buy it until it came out in paperback. I didn't, I don't have any individual issues of it. So shame on me there. But, but definitely Ronan. Uh, and then more recently, when, when, when Keanu Reeves' Berserker came out, um, I was, I bought like 10 copies of the first two or three issues. I, split some of those with my brother. Um, and I haven't looked at the prices on those now, you know, but I got variant covers on it. And um, yeah, I think I did that for the first two or three or four issues. Um, so, you know, but I also wanted to read it too, because anything Keanu Reeves and I love the fact that he went into comics, you know, and, and now that's going to spawn, last I heard, an anime and a live action movie. So, you know, he's got to do something after, now that Wick is supposedly done. So, yeah, yeah, that's kind of a speculation. Um, other than that, though, no, I, I buy pretty much what I want to read. And, uh, and I kind of worry about price, you know, value later. Um, I mean, to me, comics are first and foremost buy them because you want to read them and you love them for whatever reason. But they are an asset class as far as I'm con concerned. They are an asset class. Even a $1 comic has value. It's a good store of value. And that $1 comic book, you know, it's most likely not going to be worth $50,000 in 10 years or even $500, you know, but it's still probably going to be worth a dollar. You know, so there's there's some, you know, there's some store of value that they have that that they can maintain. Um, but then other comics, you, you, you know, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that Jack Kirby comic, that Captain America comic that I have that he signed the inside page, um, that would probably be a one five, you know, rated in a slab. But it's probably a substantially, you know, substantial worth for that. I got that comic for almost zero because it was in a bag of a bunch of other comics, you know? Um, so the person that sold it to me didn't know what they had or didn't care or whatever. So yeah, you know, uh, but that Captain America issue, like when I first saw it, I was like, I always wanted this issue. Then I opened it up and I saw that Jack Kirby signed it. And I was like, Oh, well that's even better. That's the gravy on top, man. That Ultimately, it went from almost being a, a kind of a, you know, 1.5, almost useless, the, co the cover's almost coming off to, boom, I mean, you know, this, if I were to repair that comic um, and probably even, you know, press it and clean it, 
um, it'd probably double the price of what someone would pay for, you know, but I'm not interested in that. I mean, I'm, I'm probably actually going to slab it and keep it and hang it up on the wall. After I get the signature verified, which I'm like 99% and that's certain that signature is going to be verified. Uh, let's see. Do you collect slab raw or both? Why and why not? No, so I don't really get into slab comics. I'm not opposed to the idea, but I just, um, you know, I just, I, I, I want to read my comics, you know. And, and so um, probably the way I see that going is if I did buy something that was of substantial worth, you know, I'd probably read it first and then I would maybe slab it and get it graded after that. But I have no graded slash slabbed comics. If, if, if that happens, it might just be that, that Captain America signed by Jack Kirby. That's really all I'm interested in, you know, with, with slabs. Uh, have you ever traded comic books? If not, if, so, if not, why not? If so, no, I've never traded comic books. Um... Mostly because I don't know anybody who's willing to trade comic books is, is the why not. Do you collect gold and silver, bronze age, blah, blah. Okay, I already went through that. Yeah, gold and silver, bronze, copper, and modern. But I, let me give you a word on modern comics. So. Um, I don't collect many modern comics unless there are some indies out there. There is some Batman DC stuff <clears throat> that I find interesting that, that I've showed off that I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm collecting them. I'm buying them and I'm reading them. Um... But yeah, for the most part, I'm not happy with, with Marvel and DC's modern comics. Um, tell us about your first comic book with your first personal story tied to it. So that was that Avengers um, 150, what was it? 149. Um, just that, yeah, that's the first comic book I remember seeing as a child and reading it. And it was a comic book that my brother had. And um, the cover was what just, that's what entranced me at first. I was just stricken with that cover. And, of course, I had to read it. And, of course, I read it and I didn't know what the heck was going on. Um, so, you know, but until I reread it a few times and that was my first introduction. So, you know, that was the Avengers. And that was my introduction to Thor and Captain America and Scarlet Witch and Iron Man and the Vision um, and it looks like who else was in there? The Beast was part of the team then, and um, probably I don't see him in here, but probably Ant Man and the Wasp might have been. So, um, yeah, and I just uh, that that was my that was one of those things, man. That was a lot, probably a life changing moment, you know. It just uh, it just kicked in. Now I, I didn't start buying comics until much later when I was you know cutting grass and spending my lawnmower money. But um, that was it. All right, now I, I got a feeling this is going to be a, a two part episode. <laughs> well, let's get into some some comics here <clears throat> from the box. So. One of the things I've been trying to get is more manga, but but traditional comic size comics. So here's an all you need is kill, um, free comic book day issue. Um, so this is manga, and this also has Terraformars in it as well. So these are pretty much just kind of uh, introductions to these to these comic books, and this is an introduction to the manga. Um, <clears throat> the movie Edge of Tomorrow by um, with Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt, I hear it might be getting a sequel, which I'm happy to hear because that's a great movie, and I I would love to see a sequel come out. Um, let's see, this I bought because I um, I liked the cover, and I'm not entirely sure this is a modern comic. You know, I just got done kind of trashing modern comics, but um, for a dollar, I thought. I take a shot at it, you know, if I, that's the other thing, if I see things that um, look interesting to me and I don't really know anything about them, but they're one dollar, no holler, I'll, I'll roll the dice on them. Um, Batman Odyssey, uh, this is issue number three, so um, yeah, I'm collecting these, I'm trying to put together the whole Odyssey, Batman Odyssey run. That's a great cover, man, and you know, Neil Adams for a dollar, come on. 
uh, the Marvel 2099 titles, for some reason, I got a, I got a thing for those now, uh, especially Doom, because I, I picked up a couple of issues of that in the past. Uh, so yeah, Doom 2099. Um, so I'm trying to put together that whole run, but really all of the 2099. I've got a thing for these 2099 Marvel comics. I think there was, was there an Iron Man? There's definitely Ravager 2099. I found some of those. Um, and these came out, I think, in the early 90s, you know. And um, those and like M-Tech, Marvel Tech, which is, you know, some of the Deathlock issues were that. And uh, so, so I've started kind of looking for the other M-Tech titles, which is one of them is Warlord and the other one is um, not Death. I don't think it's Death's Head. Is it Death's Head? Maybe. Superpowers, Jack Kirby, issue four of five. So I've read these in the trade paperbacks, um, but um, I've never seen, I, I, you know, when I see an individual issue, and, and honestly, I don't know why this is a dollar. Uh, I don't think it's a reprint, and it's in really good shape, you know. And that's why you go through the dollar and quarter bins, folks, because uh, if I wanted to, I could flip this on eBay for probably 10 bucks, maybe 15 I don't know. I'd have to look, but I'm not interested in that. Um, but man, I just, it's just Jack Kirby, man. I love that cover, man. It's, it's Superman's gone ape <laughs> and he's beating up the rest of the justice league. Cole issue number 10. This is when comics were 65 cents. Uh, this probably came out after I stopped or just around the time when I did. But I love this painted cover. I do have some of these early Coles. I might even have issue number one. I prob I'm probably, I know I was collecting coal. This might be a, but I'm thinking this might be a different run than the one that I originally collected. But uh, if anything, though, that kind of fills it in. Um, Marvel Masterpieces. I think that's a number two. So uh, this is... I think this is all collected. Actual, actual they're just, it's just painted artwork. And you got Kubert, McKeever, Shikanitz, uh, Stacy, and Starenko, and Dorman in this. So I think it's just a, kind of a, a, you know, a single copy art book. I guess they put out. Uh, I don't know. This is the third issue, so I don't know if there's actual story in here. But anytime I can find painted comics artwork, I'm down with that. Especially with that lineup. Um, 80 page giant, all star comics. You can see here, um, you got my homeboy, Wildcat, in this one. <laughs> Any Wildcat appearance, I certainly want to get that. And, you know, you got the Spectre in there and Hawkman. Oh, and another a Mystery Man in, in a ca uh, cape and a hat. I believe that's the old school Dr. Midnight. So uh, I think these are re... I want to say they're possibly reprints of the old All-Star comics, but I think it might be different. I think it might be like redone versions of these. Um, this came out September of 99. So um, when you want to open it and see? Let's do that. It's got two pieces of tape on it. One piece would be preferred. <laughs> Come on. Let's let this puppy breathe. All right. Yeah, these are redone. These are, uh, these are modern. Well, Copper Age, I guess. So I think what they did is they took the, the, the original Silver Age stories, and I think they redid them. I think. Um... And that's not Dr. Midnight. That's the Hour Man. See? See, now i got to start finding Hour Man comics. You see, this is how it starts, folks. The threads, the tentacles. Once the tentacles get into you, you're done. Oh, here's some Denny Cowan. This is pretty cool, man. So you got some Denny Cowan art in here. And this Wonder Woman story with Hawkman. Who else is in this? 
Mark Wade, Adam DeCranker. Um, Cowan looks to be, I think, the the big gun here in terms of the art category. But yeah, this is 80 pages. And uh, as you know, I love these uh, 80 page, you know, comic cavalcades. There's some specter action. So uh, yeah, man, cool. Can't beat it. 80 pages for a buck. Get in there. Modern comic bags, man. They're like like modern jeans. They just too tight. Alright, what else do we got here? This is a mystery box. They're, they're not in any particular order. Marvel Comics Annual starring Machine Man and Bastion. I don't know much about Bastion. And Cable shows up too. Engines of Destruction. Well, with those three... Cable and Machine Man, indeed, Engines of Destruction. There's going to be some mayhem. This is from 1998. And again, another another painted, another painted cover. Very cool. This is book two, so it makes me want to get, you know, book one. And if there's a book three and a book four, I don't know. I did not know that comic existed until I found it for a dollar. Lobo. Lobo's back. So, yeah, I've been, I've been picking up Lobo's where I can find them. There's a lot of different iterations. Um, trying to see. I don't know who did that cover, but it's a good cover. Or Lobo, who art in heaven. That's issue number four. And here is issue number three. One more time. The main man, brother. Keith Giffen. Uh, okay. Keith G Giffen is like, oh, Grant and Bisley, too. Nice. Nice. So I bet you Bisley, I wonder if he did all four of these. This is a four issue miniseries. Man, Bisley is awesome. I didn't know who he was till I saw uh, the Kayfabe guys talking about him. I probably was exposed to his art a little bit in the past, but um, yeah, now I know, you know. Now I know who he is. I've seen his artwork on other stuff. The guy's just fantastic. So, and I got issue number three. But this is Lobo Infanticide. So, this is. I don't know if it's a different series or not. Book three or four. I don't know. There's, is it, so is it part of Lobo's back, or is it just another series? There's so much different Lobo out there. Um, this has kind of that Trencher vibe to it. This is issue number two. So there were, yeah, so there's four of Lobo and Fantaside. Giffen and Grant. Another awesome cover. Super, was it? Semper Frag. <laughs> Marvel fanfare. So I actually have like issue number one, probably one through five of Marvel fanfare when it first came out. Uh, I didn't know that it had run this long, but you know, Iron Man cover, painted painted cover. So I was like, yeah, let's check that out. Beowulf, Dragon Slayer, twenty five cents, slave made of Satan. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have some Beowulfs I don't have this issue number two this is issue number two I don't think I have issue I have some later issues of Beowulf so uh, when I saw this for a buck you know and this is uh, uh, 25 cents so I would this be considered Silver Age or is it kind of no nah, this is Bronze Age isn't it this is this is on the line I think this is on the line between silver and bronze. Batman Gotham Adventures. So um, one of my missions was to find more of the Batman uh, Batman Adventures individual titles. Or what are some of the other ones? It, I think that's the main one, Batman Adventures. Now, Batman Adventures is based on the animated series. This is also based on the animated series. 
I don't know if these are reprints potentially of the Batman adventure stories. I don't think they are. I think these these are also like original stories as well. So these were going for like a buck or a buck twenty five, like in more than one place. And I had gone in there thinking, okay, the last time I was in there, I saw a bunch of these Batman adventures comics um, going for a buck. You know, like like 20 different issues and uh and i realized later on that that those were underpriced you know that this was a th there was some there was some ar comics arbitrage going there because in other places those were going for well over a dollar you know and uh i went in and like this is all this is the only one i found the rest were gone so either somebody went in there and bought them up or actually what i think what happened is is he got wise to the to fact that he maybe underpriced them and he moved them into the other section where they were properly priced. So, you know, it's all good. I don't blame him. Let's grab some more here. Deathlock special. Um, what year? This is a two dollar one. This is a number four, number one in a four issue limited series. So I don't have this in any of the trade paperbacks of Deathlock. I don't think I have it. Um, so yeah, you know, continuing my my series of of, of finding all of the Deathlocks and uh, and collecting them, and that's like a double sized issue too. Power Lords. <laughs> um, I don't know anything about this comic. It's one of three. 75 cents December of 83 it could be that I have it and I just don't remember it the cover here is by uh, Mark Teixeira and uh, Dick Giordano um, I mean I, I vaguely remember the group the Power Lords which could be a music could be a metal group <laughs> so I might be getting them confused that would be a great name for a band um, but yeah, um, so I figured, yeah, let me check it out. It's got a Teixeira cover on it, so. The Batman Strikes, all new adventures. So uh, again, this is definitely based, I believe, on the animated series. I think these are probably reprints, um, but maybe not. And this is also like a double-sized comic. And it's got a, you know, it's a cool cover. I mean, it's a cool cover. You got the Joker with a pair of scissors who's about to cut this, this card with Batman on it. Catwoman is in it. So, obviously a, a Joker-related issue. <clears throat> the Daredevil, the Man Without Fear. Frank Miller, J.R.J.R., J. R., Al Williamson, Chris Christy Scheel, and Joe Rosen. Uh, I'm pretty sure these are probably reprints. Um... And this is a foil cover by J.R.J.R. And Williamson inked it. So, yeah, I don't know. For a buck, I was like, well, let me check it out. <laughs> Adventure Comics, uh, issue 474, starring Starman and Plastic Man. Um, so, I 40 cents, so this is definitely um, bronze. Yeah, uh, uh, let's see. Andrew and Giordano cover. I like I like this cover. I like I like these old school robots. Um, and this is when Starman had like you know <laughs> that outfit. Um, so, but I know I'm pretty sure I don't have this. I don't remember really even collecting any adventure comics back in the day. Um, so I was like, yeah, let me check, let me let me look at this and see because. That might be a rabbit hole <laughs> that needs to be explored. Beyond. And uh, again, that's uh, that's another Deathlock, although he's not advertised, you know. It's just, so, you know, we just saw another issue of Beyond earlier in this video. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know anything about this comic, but Deathlock is in it. We'll have to find out why. Got an issue of the Micronauts, issue 27. Great cover, awesome cover. I have this issue. Um, no, you know, 
but this is in great condition, pretty good condition. Probably mine might be in a little bit better condition. Um, but I just, I always love this cover. It's got this kind of op art background, you know, and you got Arcturus Ran facing off against Baron Karza, a rejuvenated, reinvigorated, reincarnated Baron Karza. Because, um, yeah, issue 27, I'm pretty sure Golden was out of the picture at this point, Michael Golden, who was just a fantastic artist. But the stories were still continuing. Um, Batman, the Ten Cent Adventure. And uh, I don't, so these were 10 cent comics. These were coming out for a while, you know, um, and they were 10 cents. And Greg Rucka, Klaus Jansen, good team there. Rick Burchett, love the cover, but I don't know, I don't know if these are reprints again of the adventures or if it's like original work. Um, but we'll find out. Another issue of Beyond. So, yeah, when I ran into these, I think when I saw the Deflock cover, I was like, all right, I've got I've to I've gotta get this run and see, you know, and see what's going on here, see what this is about. There's only six issues, so I think of what, I got like three issues I found now. Some kind of mutated Spider-Man there, so probably some kind of alien extraterrestrial presence involved. Um... Nightmaster, Monsters of Rock. <laughs> I mean, do I have to even explain why I bought this? Because <laughs> I'm not going to. It should be obvious. Uh, what else we got? What else do we have in here? Let's see. Let's grab another stack. Captain Adam. Another cool cover. Issue number 23, a dollar. Came out probably after I got out of comics, but um, I think I was trying to collect Captain Adam here and there, on and off. I pr probably couldn't always find it on the newsstand. Um, yeah, so figured I'd give it a shot and take a look at it. Superman, Warrior of Mars. This is another comic book. I don't have to have. I don't have to give any explanation as to why I bought it. It should be obvious. Superman, the Ghost of Superman Future. <laughs> Again, must I explain why I purchased this? I mean, it's just how can you? You know, this is a. You you this is this is what you don't see today. You look at this and you think to myself, this you there's a range of emotions that come over you. You know, you look at this, you're like, one, it's like, this is ridiculous. Like, uh, uh, clearly they're trying to do a Ghost of Christmas Past type thing with Superman. But here, you know, we know it's going to be about Superman. He kind of looks like Santa Superman, Santa Superman Claus. You know, it just, it makes you want to pick it up and see what kind of madness is inside, you know? That's what a good cover should do. Um, issue number one of Shadow, War Zone. And Batman is in it. Enough said. I don't know anything else about it. Uh, oh, We Three, Grant Morrison, Frank Quietly. So this is a, this is a classic comic book. It's a self-contained book. Uh, it's like a mini graphic novel. Um, it's about three basically pets uh, that are kidnapped by nefarious government agencies and uh, let's, shall we say, augmented. It's a dog, a cat, and a bunny rabbit. And um, most of you probably know about this comic. If you don't, check it out. Check it out. Um, again, a dollar, it's probably going for more than that on eBay. It's not rare, but it's probably going for more than a dollar plus shipping. I can tell you that much. And uh, let's see here. I got, oh, well, here we go. Book four of four. So the final book of this Lobo Infanticide run. These covers are crazy. But that's what you want with Lobo. It's just zaniness. Another Doom 2099. 
<clears throat> In the Grip of Doom 2099, issue number three. Okay, so again, here, you have what clearly looks to be like the Blade Runner car from the movie, you know? And then you've got Doom, like he's gripping like this, you know, futuristic building. So you've got this Blade Runner element to it. You've got Doctor Doom. What's going on here? Like you got to, you, you know, you, you. this is how you hook a geek. <laughs> this, this. This is geek bait. That's what this is. This You drag this through a, a science fiction comic convention and people, and if they've never seen this before, they're going to be like following it, trying to grab at it and get it, you know, because like I'm intrigued. I want to know why is this some kind of Blade Runner, Doctor Doom 2099 mashup? I don't know. I don't know. But we're going to find out. Dark Side. Um, what is this? Issue number one from the pages of Kirby's Fourth World. John Byrne. So uh haven't read it. Um apparently it's a mini, you know, mini mini series about Dark Side. Always good. Always good. Fourth World is, is good in John Byrne's hand. Oh, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. Machine Man number three. Love that Kirby cover. Jack Kirby, man, for the win. Just look at that. From across the universe comes the malevolent menace of 10-4. The mean machine, baby. It's the mean machine. <laughs> um, I probably have a cover. I probably have a copy of this issue. Doesn't hurt to get uh, a duplicate on it. And this book is in pretty good shape. There's a little bit of creasing and stuff down here at the bottom. But the color on, on this cover is still pretty snappy. <clears throat> I've got those in the trade paperbacks, too. Another Marvel fanfare, issue number 47. So, just been kind of picking these up. Um, I think they were still doing, you know, self-contained one-off stories in these. And, um, you know, it, it had a reputation for always having top-notch artwork. I just noticed this is a UK um, publication. So, this is one of the issues that came out in the UK. But yeah, it was supposed to always be top-notch artwork, top-notch storytellers, you know. Batman Beyond, number 16. Um, kind of collecting these. There's a new Batman Beyond that just came out, and I did grab that. So, um, and it looked pretty good. So I will, I will, you know, of modern-day comics, I will, I will start buying these Batman Beyonds that are coming out. I love Batman Beyond. Um... This looks like this was written by Dan Jurgens, Thompson and Jackson. I don't know them, but uh, this was probably 2000s, I think, is when this came out. It's 299. Of course, this this would be a 499 comic today. So I'm guessing this is like 2002, 2003, maybe. King Jira, hungry like a monster. Got to get some kaiju up in the house. Um... Yeah, Marco Fontanelli. Um, this is issue number one. Grab me, I'm a one-shot story. So, but yeah, this is a this is a definitely a double-sized comic. Um, yeah, I wanted to read some kaiju. I'm tr I'm trying to warm into warm up into kaiju. I you know I want to collect all those Godzillas from the '70s and the Marvel stuff. But modern day kaiju comics, I don't I don't collect them as a matter of rule. But um, I don't know. That one, I, I was I was intrigued by the artwork, and I've seen that guy's artwork other places, and I just I wanted to check it out. Um, the Shadow by Howard Shaken. I think I might have shown this off on another video, so it looks like I've got a duplicate, but that's okay. It's Shaken. Um, yeah, I want to collect all of these Shadow uh, by Howard Shakens. Uh, there were four issues of them, and I think I really only need to get one more issue of it. I need to figure out if that's issue three or four. All right, let's see here. Might as well keep going. Marvel Knights 2001 Millennial Visions. Um, I don't know much about this. I think I have one other issue of it, but I don't know a whole lot. But you've got this cool cover here with Captain America 
Daredevil, Doctor Strange, and it looks like uh, the Punisher, but he's got a flaming head like the Ghost Rider. <laughs> so is it Ghost Rider Punisher? I don't know. But um, yeah, you know, let's check it out. Some old Hulk. Old Hulk. The Incredible Hulk unleashed. Countdown to Catastrophe. Uh, I think this is still, is this Herb Trimp's run still? Is it still a Herb Trimp? I think this is when Herb Trimpy was still doing the book. Miles above Earth, Man Brute battles by Beast, while the shield helicarrier plummets towards certain doom. So you look, by Beast is a dude that's got two heads, and they're on top of the helicarrier, the shield helicarrier. Yeah. Always good stuff there. All-Star Squadron. Um, crisis Crossover. So I guess this came out during the uh, Infinite Crisis, or was it? The, no, it was not Infinite Crisis. It was the Crisis on Infinite Earths, I think. The first big crisis. The first big DC crisis is when it came out. Um... Superman versus Mr. Mind's Monster Society. So, yeah, this is... I remember reading this in the uh, collected crisis trade paperback. So, um, this is that individual issue. So, yeah, during that period of time, uh, they had resurrected All-Star Squadron. All -Star Squadron and uh, this is January of 86 when this came out. So, um, I was buying those. They were a little spotty you know as to when they were showing up but I was getting them because I love All-Star Squadron uh, Legion of Superheroes special number one 1985 uh, I might have another copy of this but on the off chance that I didn't um, you know I bought this for a dollar and I like Legion of Superheroes especially that run in the 80s Cole another Cole the Destroyer Issue number 17. Fighting that big octopi monster. So uh, Cole was basically a Conan knockoff, but it was pretty good. Pretty good. Actually, not a knockoff. That's right. He was created by the same guy that created Conan, Robert E. Howard. So not a knockoff. I stand corrected. Another issue of Cole, issue number 16. Early issue, 25 cents. Um, definitely have not read this one or the other one that I just showed. So, yeah. Let's read some old Cole. Number 15. Barbarian's Last Battle. Clearly not, because he showed up in issue 16. So, we know that he survives this battle. Not a surprise. And issue number 12. Thulsa Doom. We all know who that is. Thulsa Doom, baby. So uh, so Cole comes across old Thulsa. Tulsa, actually. I, I, in some parlances, it's Tulsa Doom. Excuse me. Um, da -da 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 -da. What else do we have here? Um, Smite. I don't know anything about this. Um, but I believe it's based on a video game. Yeah, multiplayer online battle. But I was in the mood for some multi-page sword and sorcery. And, uh, and that's exactly what this looks to be. It's, uh, it's a small trade paperback. Probably about 60 pages, I think. Uh, Captain Harlock, Death Shadow Rising. So, yeah, more, uh... More manga in comic in American comic book format, um, based on the Japanese animation by Leiji Matsumoto. So, not done by Matsumoto, but uh, still Captain Harlock. Captain Harlock is awesome. I'll probably do a whole video on Harlock at some point. But when I find those, I grab them. Um, Crusher Joe, uh, another uh, manga anime slash title. I don't know if it was an anime. It probably is. Um, this looks also to be along the space opera genre. I love Japanese space opera, Japanese sci-fi. Um, 
if you watch my Rebel Moon rant video, <laughs> I uh, I underscore my love of that of that genre. Superman, the Earth Stealers, John Byrne. Don't know much about it, but it's a John Byrne Superman story, and it's a uh, it's a it's a thick, you know, almost a TPB, so it's about sixty pages of Superman. Another Cole issue twenty six into Death Dimension. Who did that cover? Mm, I don't know. Maybe maybe Ernie Colin. Deathlock the Demolisher. Astonishing Tales. So here we got some old school original Deathlock. Astonishing Tales. This is where he, I believe he first appeared, was in Astonishing Tales. And as a kid, I went back and got these back issues. Because um, the first I saw Deathlock was in Marvel 2 and 1 with The Thing and I think Power Man. And Deathlock shows up. It was part of that whole Project Pegasus saga, which is still one of the best things ever in comics. And um, so I started, you know, going back into the comic shops and the bookstores and looking for these these astonishing tales where he kind of shows up because I wanted to read his origin story, you know, in full. And I'm pretty sure I don't have this. So and here he's got, you know, he's got high tech weaponry, but he's got an old school medieval um, crossbow. Another issue of Shang Chi, Master of Kung Fu. So yeah, when I find these, I'm picking them up. You know, um, I, one of these days I want to read the whole run, the whole D uh, Doug Monk run. Batman Legends of the Dark Knight. So it's a cool cover. So it was worth picking up, and it's part one of two. So I just got to find the second one. So add that to the list. But this is a this is a painted, you know, another painted cover. Looks great. He's dodging all those arrows. Don't know anything about the story. Um, Space Knights. Uh, I got a couple of issues of these. I showed it. I showed those in the, in the video. So, yeah, Jim Starlin. You know, so I'm kind of picking them up. I didn't. This is the fifth and final issue of this run. So I think I had issue t three is the issue that I read. Um, so I need to get the other issues. I didn't really know what was going on, but Starlin wrote it. Um, Batista and Chu did the artwork. I don't know who's the artist and who's the inker. Batista is the artist, okay. But um, yeah, I kind of like the design of, of them. The story was, I don't know. I got to read the whole run before I can make an opinion, really. Shade, the changing man. Ditko, baby. Steve Ditko. DC Comics. Electrifying first issue. Um, you know, it's missing a little... little but still a dollar? No, I, I could flip this on eBay, man. <laughs> Come on. This is eBay flip, you know, but not interested in that. I mean, I've been looking for, you know, looking for these old Dickos with DC. So, um, yeah, excited. I'm, 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 I'm glad to have that. Justice League International Special with Mr. Miracle. Uh, bought it because it's Justice League. Bought it because it's Mr. Miracle. Enough said. Uh, this is a whole run of Empire. It's a 10, 10 issue set. Um, no, one through six plus issue zero. And I don't really know anything about Empire. Um, but when I was looking at it and I was intrigued by it, I, uh, I Googled it real quick. And I liked the, uh, the summary of what I've read. It's a space opera. Um, I do remember that much of it. And it's got a little bit, got a little bit of sword and sorcery in it too. So it might be kind of a space opera fantasy, like Star Wars kind of. But it kind of has elements of like the game Risk in it is kind of what I or Game of Thrones. A lot of political machinations and intrigue and so forth. Um, Kill Raven, Volume One, Marvel Essentials. Uh, goes back to the beginning, Amazing Adventures, Marvel Team Up, and Graphic Novel, and Kill Raven 1. And I got this at a super discount. He gave this to me for like five bucks. It was supposed to be 15, but you know. Remember the Martian invasion of 2001? No, not to worry. Some of Marvel's top talents have preserved it for you. 
Relive the sequel to H.G. Wells' masterpiece as a sword-wielding slave leads a band of fearless freedom fighters against Earth's alien overlords. And there's the back cover. So yeah, they had this War of the Worlds um, in the 70s, and uh, Killraven was, uh, was the main character. And uh, and he you know he had a sword and a ray gun and he and he dressed like this and he and he fought tripod aliens <laughs> right out of the H.G. Wells. Um, so you know I, it, I'd figure I'd I'd give it a shot. I've always been intrigued by that comic book, even back in the day, and I never really pursued it. I never really went after it. Um, let's see. You got an issue of the New Gods. I found this in the comics bin or the 25 cent bin. Mark Evanier, this was his run on it. So yeah, anything um, you know, new gods, uh, continuing the work of uh, of Kirby. So we can open these suckers right up. That's yeah, some cool artwork. Who did the chops on this? Collins, Mark Evanier and Paris Collins, script co-plotters, and Collins is the penciler. Okay. So, you know, Evan Ear, you know, had a close association with Kirby. And, you know, as far as I'm concerned, Mark Evan Ear and John Byrne were great picks. Oh, and Walt Simonson, great stewards of the fourth world, you know, mythology after Kirby had uh, had departed to the celestial cosmic eternity. Um, old issue of American Flag from Shaken. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I don't, I, I, I think I only had the first four issues of this. When this came out, it was pretty groundbreaking comics. There, there, I, there wasn't really anything like it at the time. Um, Shaken was doing a lot of new stuff with it. And the world, the, the sort of near future America that he was, uh, that he was portraying, uh, not, not too different from today, unfortunately. Shaken's Blackhawk. Um, this is his. Uh, this is a. Yeah, you know, again, I think this is the full. Oh no, this is book three. Okay, so they were publishing these like in in you know, almost cardstock format. Um, not Baxter paper, but you know some some high quality, high quality paper. You know, back then Shaken was pretty much. He was he was kind of punching his own ticket. He was getting whatever he wanted. Um, and there's the back cover. So yeah, you know Black Hawk. He was resurrecting that World War II hero, and um, it picks up. It looks like it takes place in World War II. So Black Hawk is an interesting character. Probably doesn't get enough um, coverage. This is a Harlan Ellison comic, Phoenix Without Ashes. I uh, don't know anything about it, but some cool artwork in there. Look at that. Harlan Ellison, generally pretty good. Generally pretty good. That's why I grabbed it. I mean, it was 25 cents. <laughs> and it's, it's in good shape. Uh, an issue of Dreadstar, you know? Issue number four of Dreadstar. I'm trying to collect all of the Dreadstars, too. Going back to the Marvel Epic magazine. Um, and again, Jim Starlin. So I'm also on a Starlin kick where I'm basically just grabbing anything that Starlin did. So issue number four of that, which is one of the early iterations of Dreadstar before, you know, I think he published Dreadstar with a couple of different publishing companies after he left Marvel and Epic, Marvel Epic and... Uh, well, I don't know where he wound up, but a couple of other companies, and I think there's some new Dreadstar that's coming out. Uh, there's a Marvel Flash Gordon issue number one. I don't know. I mean, there's some Al Williamson artwork in here. It's not. I'm trying to make sure. Yeah, it's all Al Williamson in this. Again, all Al Williamson for 25 cents. What, what what's going on here, man? I mean, what what is happening here? Yeah, 
you know, if there's one if there's one guy that's perfect for Flash Gordon in terms of capturing that Alex Raymond look and feel, it's it's Williamson, man. You know, so I don't know how many of these Williamson did. There's the back cover. Um, but I gotta I gotta find out. I didn't know that book existed. Here's an old Mister X, man. So I don't have any of these unless they're in the trade paperback collected editions. Um, you know, so I was shocked to actually come across. I don't find these very often. Such great cartooning in these, man. What I just this is just such a good comic book. It's just so good. It's 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 visual narrative storytelling. Um, and there's nothing, there's really nothing else like it in terms of the, the, the character and the story and the, the, just the, you know, it's not a superhero comic per se. Um, but yeah, when I saw that, you know, I just, I've never had a single standalone issue of, of that series. So this is issue eight. It was published. What year did this come out? 1986. This was groundbreaking stuff for 1986. Kind of groundbreaking now, really. Um, Shaken, again, Challengers of the Unknown. That's, the, that's another one. I'm collecting Challengers of the Unknown, all of the iterations. I started at the beginning with Jack Kirby. Um, and I forgot that Shaken had done Challengers of the Unknown. Um, this is, yeah, three of six. This came out in 2004. And here, what's this? Four. Yeah. I mean, look at the grid pattern here on both pages. <laughs> like, you, you just, nobody does grid patterns like that, other than shaking, really. I mean, who does grid patterns like that? That's a lot of, that's a lot of grids, man. That's a lot of panels. There's a lot of panels. Uh, for two pages. So, you know, talk about really moving the story along. This dates the comic. Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow. That is an awesome movie. I love that movie. You know, there's an art book for that movie. I don't know if it's still available, but I got a copy of it. I had to wait like a year and a half to get it because I, I think the funding ran out and it, they almost didn't get it off the printer. But then it did. It, it, it came out. They probably only did 5,000 copies of it. It was a... It was a Indiegogo or whatever, startup, whatever. What do they call that stuff? GoFundMe? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not I'm not hip to a lot of that stuff. Um, I don't know anything about this. This is Chaos Comics, Rack and Pain Killers. This is issue number one. This is just some black and white mayhem, I think. Or is it in color? It's in color. It's 90s comics, you know, but like extreme mayhem. <laughs> just ridiculousness. Every page is just like, blah. Uh, you know, yeah, here we go. Just, you know, just constant battling and everybody just looks super badass. And there's probably not, here's some dudes. Yeah, th I think this is what sold me on it. You know, they're on space choppers, you know, like Lobo, which they clearly got that from Lobo, I'm sure. You know, but um, yeah, Chaos Comics, you know. I've seen some of their other stuff that I think they're still publishing. And they're, they're known for this really mondo, gonzo, you know, type stuff. So, uh, that's all I've, that's all the energy I've got for this video. <laughs> There's a few more in there, but we can get to those. There's not many. I think you get the gist of it now. Uh, so, I appreciate your patronage. I appreciate you watching. And, um... Next one I think I'm going to do, like I mentioned, is Phantom Stranger and The Question. Um, talking about those omnibuses. Uh, we're not going to go through them page by page. <laughs> Each one is like 1,200 pages long. Um, but I am going to start doing some page by page you know, uh, videos here shortly. In the, probably in the next couple of weeks or so. Um, when we get back to just, you know, I'll walk you through individual comics. There, there is a batch of comics that I read out of this comics bender I've been on uh, where I pulled out like five or six comics that I thought were really good. 
that I hadn't read before. And then there were only two that were horrible um, that I just, you know, I want to show those because you just put those side by side with some of the other comics. And, and they're all rel relatively close in, I think, in time frame in terms of when they were published. So, um, yeah, that kind of thing. And then I just, I've got a, a lot of other stuff that I want to, you know, be able to show. I bought a new camera rig. Um, so we'll be able to get my phone better positioned over, you know, a book with, with some better lighting than the old rig that I was using. Cause that was, it was, it was annoying to use that rig. It was always almost tipping over and, uh, you could see the arm, you could see the legs, you know, and I didn't want to keep like scruffing my comics up against those. And it was just, it was just a pain to deal with that one. So, um, definitely want to get back into that style of, of, of video where we, we do some deep dives into some individual issues and, and some of the art books I've got too, you know, like that Batman one I showed on the last video. So uh, if you haven't seen my most recent video, it's, it was a live feed um, and it was called Comic Spender. Uh, Comic Spender Live is what it was called. So uh, this one, I'll probably call it Comic Spender Part 3. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Stay warm and stay geek.